I always feel that music is the first, the best and the greatest creation of God. The sound of the ocean tells you and reminds you that you're such a small particle in this humongous universe. This is DSP and you're watching me on Amazon Music Artist Diaries. <laughs> My father actually put us into a lot of very very good habits. He got us into the habit of cutting those, uh, they were called Nitya Satyalu, which means uh, universal truth. When I was a very very small kid, I read uh, uh, one of those which said, Kalu Tadokunda Samudra and Data Galige Medavaina, Kalu Tadokunda Jeevita and Data Lid. So, which hit me very hard, which means even a genius who can cross an ocean without getting his legs wet cannot cross life without getting his eyes wet. That was my lesson for life. So I was prepared. Okay, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> so it's like maybe that come on, come on, say jalsa. The most guaranteed <laughs> thing in life is problems. So always be ready to face them because you can't escape them. You have to face them. When I lost my dad and when I lost my guru, my Anna Manuel Yu Srinivasana, those are all my, my lowest points in life where I had to, I always attach a purpose to my joy or sadness. When I'm happy, I attach a purpose. Like, on this happy note, let me use this energy and create something nice. If I'm sad, I again attach a purpose. Like, let me pump in my energy and create something nice. I guess uh, that's the only way to keep going. <laughs> The only difference between people who succeed and who, people who fail is not talent, is consistency. I have seen millions of people who are million times more talented than me. Maybe the difference is consistency, you know, I don't stop, nothing can stop me. Ta-da! Okay, so this is my humble studio where we keep recording all our music, composing, jamming. All my music that you're listening to and giving us all your love is being created here. And now, here comes the god of music, my inspiration, the one and only Isayyani, the Maestro Ila Raja sir. And for the end is all, I pray to him and enter my studio. In my studio, this is the uh, place where we record. Why I made this place here is this was my father's writing room since I was a kid. So all um, amazing geniuses, big people used to come to meet him like Sita Ramasastri uncle, Veturi sir and big directors and um, Chiranjeevi sir, Allurvin uncle. Everybody used to uh, come and they all used to have sittings and all over here. So this, this has an aura of all the legends, you know, putting their thoughts into this. So later when I, so I wanted to make this into my studio later. So that's what I did. And this was the, the recliner that I customized and made for my dad. And um, yeah, after I lost him, I still, I kept it in my studio. And this is where I sit and listen to my music, my mixes and all that. And this is my guru, the great one and only Mastro Mandolin Yu Srinivasana, from whom I learned mandolin. And then this is my dad's picture here. I put up both here. Because there is a magic in this, because when I go there and when I put up the mic and sing, I can feel like both of them looking at me from here. So I get that courage from that and blessings from that and also at the same time an unknown uh, responsibility and fear inside me that okay, they are watching so I have to do my best. Amazon Music Amazon Music <laughs> Most of my songs, why they are danceable is because first I imagine the dance. Whether that kind of dance is there in the movie or not is a different question. But I imagine dance and from that I get a rhythm. Like this kind of rhythm should be there for this kind of dance. And from there I get a tune. Okay, so my whole process is reverse. For me music and dance, for technically, because technically we all use it, I'm saying music, dance. But otherwise music and dance as is, is like, one component for me, I can never separate them. I cannot compose music without dancing. When I make a tune, when it sounds really good, 
uh, it surprises me as much as it surprises you also. <laughs> so like, my tune should surprise me also. That's what keeps driving me. My dad used to ask me a lot of questions when I was a kid. Like some random questions every day when I used to have. I always used to have lunch with him. So suddenly one day he asked me, okay, I'll ask you a question, tell me the answer. I said, okay, what? So he said, tell me in life, in life, do you remember the truth that you said better, you remember, or the, the lie you remember better? So then he told me, the truth you'll always remember, like 2 years, 5 years, 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, no matter what, because the truth always has only one version. And you'll say the same thing to how many millions of people ever ask you that. But the lie is something that you'll make it up. So, and then the lie keeps altering itself, as you say, depending on the person to whom you're lying. So then it's hard to remember the lie and definitely one day you'll get caught. Oh, this is one of the biggest lessons I thought. So I'm always true to myself in my movies or in my uh, friendship or relationship with people and, and all that. So just be true and be uh, stripped off of other tensions and pressures. Then uh, there, are, there is only one thing existing, your focus on your work. That's it.